Before the YouTube channel, before the vision of LWA and my goals to become the greatest zoologist, before any of that, I had a dream. I wanted to become a pro surfer. Now I had studied, I trained, I became literally obsessed. But could a young boy from Louisiana become a legendary surfer? No, I freaking suck. Today, I'm heading to North Florida to enjoy a morning of surfing. Well guys, today is a little bit of a different story. We're gonna be actually going surfing. Today is not a wildlife adventure per se. I'm actually here in North Florida for the day just to surf. So waves aren't too big today, about one to two foot swells. Not sure if it's gonna be choppy yet. I'm thinking it is because it's a bit windy, but it doesn't matter. I've got a day to get out there, so I'm hoping to get some good rides. It's a little bit windy today. Honestly, I might go snake hunting after this. Like I'll only surf for about an hour and a half, two hours at most. So after this, I might go on a wildlife adventure. I use a 7.6 fun board. Not as stable as your typical longboard, but you can ride smaller surf with it and have some maneuverability. No sharks out today. There is a pretty. After catching a couple of waves this morning, I figured I'd turn the cameras off and do what I actually came to do for the morning and just chill out on the water. Now that I've surfed till my arms felt like falling off, let's go catch some critters. You know, this is just a FYI. I really want to get sponsored by Red Bull. I feel like our brands would really, you know? But they told me since I'm not a sport channel, they, will, they won't sponsor me. But y'all do sponsor surfing, so... Maybe. Believe it or not, the beach and the surrounding dunes are home to many wild creatures. You can think of these habitats almost like a miniature desert. And so the wildlife here often reminds me of things you'd find out west. Thought you were a coach with a bird. Don't bite me. Just trying to bite me. There we go. I tell you what, that is a grumpy, grumpy little racer snake. This is a very common species to see here honestly anywhere but they do live very well on these set look at how he's aiming for my face racers and coach whips like to do this in particular where they just kind of lift their face right up to theirs and whack straight out i mean look at him he's gonna go for me again I'll tell you what these are a pretty smart snake and you can see why they'd survive in such a harsh environment like this they eat lizards, they'll eat other snakes, they'll eat a lot of the things that actually live on these sand dunes. So while racers are common and you can find them virtually anywhere, it just goes to show you how good of a survivor they are. Okay, you're going for my face again. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. He'll launch too. He's got a good, good, He's got a good launch on him, so I kind of want to keep him away from me a bit. Well, really cool snake. He's really grumpy, so we're going to go ahead and put him back on the dunes. Keep looking for our targets, but that is awesome. Little black racer, first snake of the day. The reptiles here are tough, fast, and oftentimes feed on strange things like fiddler crabs and even birds. This whole environment is pretty weird, filled with cactus, rosemary, and small venomous bugs that you might not expect. Oh, here we go. There's a scorpion. Well, here we go, guys. This here is a striped bark scorpion. This is a very common species here up in coastal Florida. They're practically a dime a dozen, even in these coastal areas. Now, this would be considered a full-grown bark scorpion. They don't get much bigger than this. This is about max size for the species. And they're not much of a threat to people. As you can see here, he's walking all over me. He's not really going to try to sting me unless I pressure him. However, if I did take a sting from one of these guys, the sting would probably be about as bad as a wasp sting. So they're not necessarily a dangerous species, at least this part of the country, or I should say this part of the world, these species aren't dangerous. Now Florida really only gets this species, the hence striped scorpion, but out west you're gonna get a lot more. Even starting in Louisiana, we get the southern devil scorpion and a few species like that up in our longleaf areas. However, Florida, mostly, if you see a scorpion in Florida, it's most likely gonna be one of these little guys. Now they are an arachnid, so they have all the traits of an arachnid. They have that really tough exoskeleton, they have those little pinchers out front, they have four pairs of legs, and the really special feature of the scorpion 
is that big old stinger, and that is what they like to whack their prey with, immobilize it, and then take those little pinchers and pull it to their mouth and eat it. They don't actually bite. They've got a very tiny mouth, and so they have to use that stinger and they have to use those claws in order to disable their prey. Now this little guy is very fidgety, he's not stopping for anything, and I would have to guess that's something with the light out, as well as the wind. It's kind of too windy to keep them in the crux of my hand there, like I normally like to do with scorpions. Now these are actually a very difficult species to handle, believe it or not. They're very easy to drop, but they're also a very tough species. I haven't dropped this guy yet, but this is a species that I've really had to learn how to work with, being as we don't really have a bunch of them where I'm from. But I just gotta stay with him. He's very active, he's very mobile, and he's just a difficult little animal to keep in frame, get shots of, and keep him up in a way that he doesn't fall off, because they, woo! He did not like that. Yeah, see, if I accidentally put my hand on top of him, or even too close, he will start freaking out, and he might even sting me. But, I already said, very safe species. Even if he does sting me, it's gonna be no worse than a wasp sting. Now these little guys would be predated on by all sorts of other animals out here. Birds, other scorpions, centipedes, even little spiders will have a go at them. But for the most part, they're not the choice prey of anything. And it's crazy, the ocean's right there, we're right on the coast, and you'll get all these little scorpion species out here. It's really cool. There's lots of other really cool arachnids around here. The centipedes are pretty cool. The spiders, the jumping spiders in particular, are very special out here. And it's just a very interesting habitat. It's almost like our little slice of desert right out here on the East Coast, or I should say on the Gulf Coast. It's just our little slice of dry, arid environment with these strange desert-like species like scorpions, coach whips, and even rattlesnakes. It's really cool. All right, time to get this guy back under his piece of wood. There are many venomous and hazardous species out here on the coastal dunes, including the infamous eastern diamondback. Yes, I'm bringing up diamondbacks again, leave me alone. And these areas are also home to one of the smaller, brightly colored scolopendra, or as they're known in English, giant centipedes. Oh, a Florida blue. Hey, hey, look at you. Wow. This is, without a doubt, the biggest Florida blue centipede that I've ever seen. And fun fact, I didn't even think that they ranged here until about five seconds ago. I've seen them plenty in central Florida, even a little bit in south, but never here. He's actually a bit thin. You see, he's a bit skinnier up there. But wow, I was not necessarily expecting to see one of these guys here. Now, Florida blues get their name because as you go more east of here, their legs are actually a genuine blue coloration, which makes them quite a beautiful centipede, actually, when you're looking at them. Now, this one, he's got more of a grayish stripe down his back. He's got a little bit of a greenish tinge on his legs, but then you can see that extra orange coloration on the sides. Now, what's really cool about these guys is these are actually a scolopendra species, which is actually the giant centipede. So this is actually a small giant centipede. It may sound like an oxymoron, but the idea is that this is grouped up with the Texas red-headed centipedes, the giant deserts, the Caribbean giants. This is in the same category as those species. He just happens to be a bump smaller. Now, this one is actually being totally laid back, but they'll go ballistic. Yeah, see, I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. He's gonna bite me, and it's gonna be very unpleasant. Ah! Please stop. Okay. All right, we're not gonna do that again. <laughs> we're not. We're just gonna. We're just gonna let this guy hang out. This is an absolutely incredible species out here. Not one that I was necessarily expecting to see. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to check out the time that we found the Texas redhead centipede over in Louisiana. Really great stuff there, and we will see you guys next time. All right, time to put this guy back under his log. But whew, he was wild.